Hi everyone, my name is Tori, this is Nova Life, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my March wrap up to share with you. I had a not so great reading month. I just had okay reads. I just had reads that were either hard no or they were just like eh. I didn't have any five star reads other than a reread so I say I have a five star read. I have one five star read like in my statistics but that's just a reread. I reread it via audio because the audio came out and yeah that was like my only like oh my god five star read but it was reread so I don't really know if that counts. Anyway I'm rambling. Here's some statistics for you. I read a total of 12 books. 10 of those were audio and two of those were ebooks. So I had a very heavy audio month. I was extremely busy this month with work. I did go to Sweetgrass um, in Charleston, which was a book signing, and I didn't read for about a week. I did have to read some stuff for work that obviously is not included in these statistics, but yeah, it was just an okay reading month and I don't remember the last time I had 12 books in a reading month. That was like really low, but I do have some chunkers, so. But I did have some good ones that I would definitely still recommend. They just weren't like, oh my god, amazing, if that makes sense. So I had one five star, four four stars, four three and a half stars, two three stars, one one star, and one DNF. So the DNFs I don't count in my like total, but the DNF was a little life. I did a whole reading vlog. I'll link that in the cards for you to go check it out. I'm just going to mention it right off the bat. I'm not gonna get into that book. It was a hard DNF. It was terrible, awful. I don't know why people read that book, but you can go listen to all of my thoughts in that reading blog. I had 5,104 pages, which I am really happy that I hit the 5,000 mark. I was kind of nervous that I didn't hit the 5,000 mark, but like I said, I had some heavy romanticy books, and yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right into all the 12 books that I read. Now, the first one we just... I feel like this set the tone for the month. Me and Jess have piece of books. We were hearing this book. It's called If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. And I have been hearing about this and seeing it all over TikTok. Apparently, the second book came out. And I think that's either from his point of view or his friend's point of view. But I read the first book and I did vlog it. I'll have that vlog of course linked in the cards and the description box below for you guys if you want to go check that out as well where I talk about why do people read this book. I was so confused on why people actually like it like it. I don't know it just wasn't for me. So I gave it one star and my notes literally say no not worth it and I can't say the rest because it'd be a spoiler. <laughs> but this is like a contemporary I wouldn't even it's it's a fiction book. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm I, that's all I'm gonna say about it. Uh, I don't really want to get into too much other than that. But yeah, it was just, I don't know why people like this book. It wasn't for me, not my cup of tea. We're gonna move on. The next book I read was actually one I am so happy I finally read, and that is The Crown of Oaths and Curses by Jay Bree. This is a romanticy, very much hate to, I'm assuming, love, but the end of the book, you know, it's alluded to some things. The second book is coming out in April. I did forget to put that on my TBR for April, but I definitely will be reading that. I physically read this. It was 663 pages. Uh, it was a very hefty book, but I really love this. I think that this was like, I gave it a solid four stars and it was because it's a unique fantasy in the way that's like, it has this setup of faded maids. You see that they're both like traveling this specific point and time, like this specific town and you know, the Oracle or the seer or whatever they call it has told them, oh, you're going to meet your faded maid at this time and blah, 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 blah. And they're both, you know, like he's very excited. She's just like kind of dreading hit and all of this stuff like that. And you find out that she is literally a witch and he has been, him and his kingdom have been killing witches for years and years and centuries now and so it's like his mortal enemy it's like the one person in the world and one like type of creature like they have fey and like all these other things but like the witches are like the one creature that he's been trying to like wipe out on and in his kingdom so it's very interesting and she's like thrown in this this dungeon for most of the book and she just like kind of lets them do it he's like she's like they're not going to change their opinion of me she is so fucking powerful though and i loved it. I love Rook so much. She's such an interesting character. This would have been a five-star read if it wasn't as long. And I, I'm conflicted. I'm like, okay, I understand why it was so long because you kind of had to like drag out and see his hatred, but his hatred was so like just so prevalent constantly. And I was like, I don't need to see that over and over and over again. So like that would be my only critique is like take out of this like 
the time, if that makes sense, of like him talking about how much he hates her. Obviously, he doesn't have all of the information about her specific kind of witch. And he realizes a lot of things at the end of the book, which sets up the next book very dramatically. And I'm like, I am ready for the second book. Anyway, I could talk about this for a while, but I really love this book. It was a good book. <laughs> kind of went on a tangent on that one, but I really love that one. Okay, the next book I read was actually an ALC that I got through Libro FM, and that is Happily Never After by Lynn Painter. So I did have the e-arc of this too, but the audio was on Libro FM, and I gave this three and a half stars. It was cute. It was adorable. It was a cute contemporary romance. I don't really have anything else to say other than that. Um, it's like they live in a big city. It's friends to lovers. He is like at her wedding that's like objects to her wedding. And so she kind of has to go on like, you know, this journey of figuring out what she wants. She found out her, her to be husband cheated. She also is exploring this whole thing of, you know, being a objector was that they, what they call it. So she learns from him and it's interesting. There was a bit of a miscommunication thing in here that I did not like. I'm not a fan of miscommunication, especially when like it can be worked out in a specific way, but I gave it three and a half stars. It was cute. That was my first Lynn Painter. So I did like the narrators. I'm going to try and point out the narrators if I listen to the audiobook, and that was Helen Laser and Sean Patrick Hopkins and they did a pretty good job with that one. So another one that came in from my library was actually Last Call at the Local by Sarah Grunder Ru Ru Ruiz? Ruiz. I think that's how you say her last name. Now this book physically was sent to me from Berkeley. I'm on their Berkeley influencer program so I get like two or three books sent to me for free every single month and I actually like this one. I listened to this actually I think on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I think I listened to it like around St. Patrick's Day. It was adorable. I also gave this three and a half stars, but this is more of like a positive three and a half stars because I think the representation of um, OCD and ADHD in this book was actually done really well. And it shows that two people who are neurodiverse or have like some type of mental health issue um, or a mental health disorder or anything like that can actually like have a functioning relationship and sometimes people you know, like if there's two that have some type of neuro diverse condition that they can't be together but this shows that they can and they have to work it out in a different way and I actually really like that it was cute it was adorable it's a very character driven book so and it, I didn't feel like they were like it was like a super heavy like plot but it was also character driven but that also didn't like drive me to be like oh my god this book is amazing so it was three and a half stars but it's like three and a half four stars I did enjoy this I thought it was cute set an island he is like tattooed he has a little cat that is oh my god so adorable she's like traveling or she's kind of figuring out her life so like overall it was a good book Overall, it was a cute book. I liked the audiobook. The narrators were Gary Furlong and Carissa Ovacker, which I've never heard of them too, but sometimes with traditionally published books, I don't know the uh, narrators. So I thought it was good. Now, the next book I read was Heartless Hunter by Kristen Siccarelli. So I did get this from Book of the Month. I did a sponsorship with them, and I was like, you know what, but I really want to pick up this book. Now, this is definitely a YA fantasy, and I gave this one also three and a half stars. I just had like an okay reading month. When I tell you I had an okay reading month, I really did. This one was cute. It was adorable. There wasn't like anything overly fantastic, but there wasn't anything that was like, oh my God, horrible. Now I struggle with calling this a fantasy book because it's one of those books that's set in kind of like a historical time with witches and some people that have magical powers. So it's kind of like that whimsical aspect. This is definitely a cat and a mouse um, story between Gideon and our female character. Oh my god, what's her name? Rune is her name. And it's kind of like secret identity. They're definitely rivals because he's once again trying to like, you know, take all the witches out and she's a witch and she's trying to keep that undercover but also help other witches. So it's a YA like fantasy, fantastical. It's hard for me to like describe this book honestly. Just because it's not super fantasy heavy. Like there's not like this fantasy world. There's, you know, different creatures but it's very much a, like historical setting where there's balls and parties and you have like a hierarchy of people and you know who has this kind of you know who has who has who's wearing the stuff that's in like the style that's in who's not oh that's from last season so it's like that historical I don't really know what to call it but it was not like some fantasy books it wasn't like crown of Oaths and curses fantasy so three and a half stars to this one now I did continue on with some more romanticy because that's what I was feeling and I read throne of the fallen by Carrie Maniscalco so my patrons picked for me to read this book along with another one that I'm gonna talk about so I do have an exclusive reading vlog over on my patreon you can join and watch it if you want I always have a free seven day trial if you want to just try it out and see um the link's in the description box below but I like this book now, me and Carrie Maniscalco have not gotten along. 
I read, ooh, what is that? Kingdom of the Wicked. I tried. I DNF that book two years ago when it came out. I have no desire. I hated it. I was like, this is so immature. And I was really worried that this also would be like that. Now, I gave this four stars, and it's kind of like The Crown of Oaths and Curses, where it's, th it's thick. And there was definitely some parts that definitely could have been cut out. But I do like the um enemies kind of part I don't know it's like the seven deadly sins I wouldn't say enemies they're kind of rivals definitely fantasy it's um we follow envy in this book and you see how he's like coming into the human world at first I was like why is this considered a fantasy when it's literally like them being in a historical setting like she is you know do I think she's a dressmaker forgot what she does or she owns like a gallery or something and she's like going around to her friend's house and they have to have chaperones like historical right the fantasy kicks in about 30 percent and I was like oh okay this is how it's happening so you basically go to the fantasy world and I really like the adventures they go on there's some parts where both of our characters are kind of just like going around having an adventure like traveling or stuff like that I actually enjoyed that I thought it was done really well I wasn't bored but it was a little too long which is why I didn't give it like a full five stars but I'm like okay Carrie Mascalco the way you set up the next book for the next couple I'm like I need that book I need to know what happens with them. So I did enjoy this one. Very glad I read this one. Now I did have an ALC of Rain by Cassandra Robbins and this was a three star read for me. I would recommend it for those people who want a spicy rock star romance. And I just at this moment sometimes, <laughs> how do I say this? Romances that are heavy on the spice just haven't really hit for me. It has to kind of like make sense. So, you know, we have our hero. He's a rock star. A female character has to go to him. They're both like in bands. They're both in the limelight. All of that stuff, right? She has to go to him to kind of like help with her album. She's trying to go solo. When she walks in, she sees him having a thing like sexual encounters with like three other women basically. And she's kind of like triggered because her ex cheated on her and that's how she found her ex with another woman. So, you know, it was like very heavy spice right off the bat, but I know that about Cassandra Robbins writing. I know that she writes heavy spice with, you know, a little bit of a plot. Now, I felt like this was enemies to lovers, but more like hate to love to the point where like, oh my God, they hate each other. But then like in an instance, they were like all over each other having sex. And to me, I'm like, it has to make sense. And to me, it didn't really make sense. But like the story was good. She was going through this journey and it was okay. They're forced together, forced proximity. So if you're looking for that, I would recommend it. But if you're not really looking for that type of thing, you know, you could pass. Uh, I did think the narrators were good, but it's Corn King and Angela Roca, which I have heard of them before. Now, the next book was the other book that I read for my Patreon exclusive reading vlog, and that was This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. You guys know I love Kennedy Ryan. I, I just adore her as a person. Um, as an author, I look up to her. She's done a lot for the community. And she is thriving out there, okay? She has gotten so many deals and she deserves it. Now, this book I would say is women's fiction. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, no, she only writes romance. They do have an HEA. Women's fiction can have an HEA. But there's a difference of if the romance is in the forefront of the story versus the journey that the character and or in this case our female character is going on. And I think that Before I Let Go was a perfect blend. Like it balanced and towed the line of women's fiction and romance perfectly. This book definitely leaned more women's fiction. And I gave it four stars. I thought it was emotional. I thought, I, you know, you know. If you're if you've ever been in a point in your life where you don't know where you're going and you have to figure things out and there's something that happens that kind of your life blows up and you have to like reassess everything then I think you would like really connect with this book and it was Kennedy Ryan's writing it's solid I felt connected to the characters you know she put a lot of time and effort into having Judah our main male character his two sons which he's divorced his two sons are autistic and they're on different levels of the autistic spectrum and I thought that was really interesting the way that she put that. But I will say this is Soledad's journey and her growth story. 100% that's what this book was. But I did like the romance. I just felt like it was easy and natural. And I wanted some more of that angst that I know that Kennedy Ryan can write with the romance and the stuff going on in the life. So four stars. I mean, it was Kennedy Ryan. I did enjoy it. Um, and then I picked up the audio, A Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. So this was also on, I think, Libro FM, if I'm not mistaken. This is the Afterlight exclusive edition. This is the only physical copy I have. But because I got it in March, I was like, ooh, why not pick up the audiobook? I have it. And I listened to it before, right before Sweetgrass. And I give this three and a half stars. Tessa Bailey, um, some of her traditionally published stuff is cute. It's adorable. I liked it because it was a different sports romance. So this is surrounding golf. And our main male character, he is a golf legend he's on the course and you see this woman our female character Josephine she is cheering him on she is his number one fan even though his career is going down the drain mostly because of him like 
let's be honest, 90% of it is completely his fault. So he's like, his caddy quits and he's like, you're my number one fan, come on tour with me. And so they kind of forced together, they developed this relationship. I like that it was type one, di they had representation of type one diabetes and I think it was done really well. It was moments where she had to work through it. He had to work through it as being like a partner to someone that has a chronic illness. I enjoyed the audiobook. It was really good. The narrator was Callie Dalton, which I have read some other stuff by her before or listened to some of her other audios and I liked it. So overall, this was a good read. I'm not mad about it. And then the reread I had was Unsteady by Peyton Corrin. So this is the indie edition. I have not gotten the new traditionally published edition. I do want to get that one as well because I do like it. But I wanted to listen to an audio one because I put this on hold like two months ago, I think, or a month ago, and I was first in line. So on release day on the 26th, it immediately came in and I was like, I I need to reread. I need something good. I need a book that I know is going to hit me and I'm going to love. I love Reese and Sadie's story. I think they are just two people that are meant to fall in love and have a love story. So this is more of like a comfort read for me and I was not mad at it. Five stars, reread, sports romance. He's a hockey player. She's a figure skater. They have a lot of things going on. She has a lot of family things. He's struggling with PTSD from having a really nasty hit and now trying to get back on the ice. The, the representation of like the PTSD and panic attacks is so good. I love this book so much. I can't, can't recommend that one enough. Now, I did get, um, I did pick up a new release, Wild River by Laura Pavlov, and unfortunately I gave this three stars. If you guys know, Loving Romeo was one of my favorite reads of January? February? Whenever that book came out, love that. Now, I do love the found family aspect, and I couldn't pinpoint why I didn't love this so much, and my friend Monica was like, it's because the secondary characters really, like, carry the story and that's true now river in the first book is introduced as this hero that is you know he has a little bit of a past he's struggling with a lot of things but he's a lawyer like he's made something out of his life he wants to help people and i feel like in this book we got to see like not i don't know another side of him but the side that kind of didn't really make sense in that way i was like kind of confused of some of the things that he was doing and the way that he really went about things like being a mature adult and he just like completely turned into like an immature adult and handled certain situations completely unprofessionally and completely like immaturely and i was like uh this is not the character i thought i was gonna read about so I don't know if that's because I had expectations, but it was not really what I wanted at the time. Will I continue on with the series? Yes, because um, I am excited for the next book, but I'm really hoping, I think I'm going to lower my expectations. Like just the first book was so good. I was so blown away that I was like, wow, okay. Now, my, I would say after my reread of Unsteady, my favorite book of the month was The Brightest Light of Sunshine by Lysia, Lysina Coney. Now this one I've heard all about from my friend Tabitha. I've seen it going around. I've seen the cover going around. It looks like a lit fic, like a lit literary fiction book, but it's actually a romance and our female character is a ballerina. She has had a sexual assault in the past and you kind of like see how she's struggling with that. Our hero is eight years her senior. He's 30 years old and he is a tattoo artist and he has single guardianship over his little sister who's four, which, oh my God. Now this is like strangers to friends to lovers. And if you know me, friends to lovers is one of my favorite things to read if it's done really well. I love it so freaking much. I think that Friends to Lovers really does it for me and this book makes me so excited to read more Friends to Lovers and it got me back into like, oh my god, I was feeling giddy about this book. I savored it. I devoured it. There was a lot of quotes I highlighted. I really connected with a female character when she's like going through something and trying to open up to someone. Um, I just loved their romance. It was... You know, you could see, even though she was young, she had moments that she was jealous for no reason and, you know, he was like, no, we're working this out. We're talking this out. And there's a there's a part later in the book where it's kind of flipped that he's going through things with his sister and his mother and stuff like that because his mother is an alcoholic. There's like some other stuff going on and she's like, you know what? I'm going to give you time because that's what you're asking for, but I still am going to be here for you no matter what. Like they really become like really good best friends and then it you know, turns into a really like, I don't know, just heartwarming romance and I love that. I loved it. It was a good book. It's like four, four and a half stars. I'll rate it four, but it's probably a four and a half star read. So yeah, it was just, it was good. It was, it was healing, journey, healing. Um, I just loved it. I loved it. It was great. I want to read the second book now. I think the third book's coming out in September, if I'm not mistaken. But I really like this author's writing. And I don't know if that's her first book. There were some things I could tell, like, writing-wise, where I was like, oh, okay, that kind of didn't fit, didn't flow very well. Um, but I cannot wait to read the second book. I think it's Maddie, who his sister, now is 17 years later. And it's like, I think her uh a physical therapist she's a ballerina and she has an injury and she has to go to a physical therapist if you guys know i love ballet i love ballerinas in books 
I used to be in dance when I was younger and I had a chronic illness and now I can't dance anymore but I still love reading about that I just oh, I love that anyway those were all 12 books that I read in March you can let me know where your favorite book of the month was I would love to know in the comments down below for the emoji drop me an orange heart emoji because the last book I read was the cover was orange and it's very pretty it's very springy so I think there's an orange heart emoji <laughs> drop me your favorite heart emoji if there's no orange heart emoji but thank you so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe for more content for me as always I hope you're living a novel life and I will see you in my next one bye guys